everybody. Good evening. Um, sorry to take you away from your dinner, but I'm going to go ahead and, and get the program started. Um, I'd like to welcome you to this evens, evening's presentation. My name is Neera Jane, uh, and I'm an assistant professor of mechanical engineering here at Purdue. So we are here tonight, as Eckhard said, to present the Outstanding Mechanical Engineering uh, Engineer Awards uh, and pay honor to some of the most uh, accomplished alumni from our school. There are more than 18,000 Purdue mechanical engineers out there, from the boardrooms to the classrooms, from factories to government offices all over the world. Tonight, 17 of you join the ranks of the best of the best outstanding mechanical engineers, and it's my privilege to introduce our 2020 recipients. From the 1983 movie War Games to reality, our first honoree, William Conley, works in a field that most of us aren't even aware of, electronic warfare. He first got involved after finishing his PhD at Purdue in 2009. He joined the technical staff at the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Crane, Indiana, and worked on electronic systems to disrupt imp improvised explosive devices, IEDs. Soon, he was off to Washington, joining DARPA, and then eventually to the Pentagon to pursue research and strategic uh, strategies, I'm sorry, in electric war uh, electronic warfare. After a decade of public service, he left in 2019 to become CTO and Senior Vice President at the Aerospace and Defense Company, Mercury Systems. So for protecting Americans from the dangers of war, both seen and unseen, um, and making the world a safer place, Purdue is proud to bestow the Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to William Conley. Excellent. Uh, so first off, thank you guys, oh, right? That's, that's the, the first thing that one obviously has to say. I, looking back on it and going, what is there that really deserves to be an acceptance speech um, around being the outstanding mechanical engineer, you know, one of the 2020 inductees. And what I realized is thinking back on it, it was all of the Legos that my mom and dad stepped on when I was a kid, I think in large part destined me for where I am today. Building off of that, and another slightly embarrassing story, but with uh, Mr. Steve Florence sitting at the table with me. Um, so back in high school, as we were remodeling the high school, driving through the high school parking lot, I managed to hit the undercarriage of my car on an exposed manhole cover as they were repaving the lot. Realizing I was gonna be in a ton of trouble when I got home if I didn't take care of that, I managed to drop the pan off the transmission, haul it into the high school shop, that's what we called it back in those days, hand it to Mr. Florence and say, I need help who fortunately and quickly was able to go ahead, patch it back together. I was able to bolt it back on the other side of the car. And my father was not happy, but he understood at some level after taking the car to the mechanic and the mechanic said, it looks pretty darn good to me, <laughs> that perhaps I was destined for, you know, in many ways, the School of Engineering in some way, shape or form at Purdue. And so with that in mind, you know, building off of it and the great part about being here this evening, seeing old advisors, old friends, old professors, and bringing everyone together and thinking back on everything that we have managed to do. Um, awards are absolutely awesome to receive and all of the people, all of the, the teams that go into it and the fact that I know that I would not be here if not for that larger team. And so with that in mind, thank you guys. I really appreciate the recognition and appreciate the honor and it's great to be back at Purdue today. Thank you. Okay, if you like driving high-performance cars, you have our next honoree, William Cummings, to thank for that. He is the foremost technical expert in combustion aerodynamic design at Rolls-Royce North America. In his engineering career, he worked on making jet engines cleaner, more powerful, and more efficient, as well as optimizing their aerodynamic properties. He has continued this work in his management role and is a widely recognized expert in the gas turbine industry. He has also been crucial in forming a strong relationship between Rolls-Royce and Purdue. At Zucro Labs, he oversees all Rolls-Royce research in grass turbines, rotating detonation engines, and alternative fuels. For his work in mentoring students, advancing aerospace research, and ensuring a strong future for both Purdue and Rolls-Royce, we are proud to give this outstanding mechanical engineer award to William Cummings.
well, with the weightlifting done. Let me just say briefly that um, I thought about um, what Purdue has meant to me and to my colleagues who I went to school with here over the years. And, and a word that really pulls it together is inspiration. Um, from when I was down at the University of Florida and my textbook in fluid mechanics was written by Fox and McDonald. It was a great book. And, he, and then I went on to the heat transfer book from Incorpira and DeWitt. Um, professors probably, you don't, most of you don't know, but these guys were teaching classes when I got here and they were fantastic at conveying what it is that we had to learn, instilling in us uh, the, the interest and the, the enthusiasm for engineering. And, and I did find it really inspirational that they had gone to all the trouble to do so well at that, even as they were teaching and doing research. It's been great over the years to work at Rolls-Royce with so many of the people who I uh, worked with out at the lab, um, now called Zucro. Um, I think we all felt a special camaraderie out there as we were doing our research, and it was great to be part of that and, and feel that. Um, and then fast forward to the last five or ten years, and um, I meet Professor Paniagua and those of us at Rolls-Royce um, come together with him and put up uh, an entire turbine research facility that's now up and running. We're taking data. We're all excited about that. Every time we come up here, we get enthused. I know it's hard to believe that there's anything more exciting than a reorganization, reorganization announcement back at the home office, but believe it or not, we come up here and we get very excited about what we're doing in the world of turbines. And, and on top of that, sort of continuing that, continuing that inspirational theme, not only is he doing research, working with us, um, teaching, he's got a, a team that's doing Hyperloop work out with Elon Musk's team out in California. And it just sort of continues that, that general thought of Purdue and its professors and its students um, just giving so much of themselves and pulling ourselves together to do all sorts of fascinating things. So I just wanted to convey that um, that's what it's meant to be part of the Purdue community over all these years. And I want to thank also the people who've put this together tonight. It's a wonderful ceremony and, and very, very nice to be part of it. So thanks very much. Okay. Our next award is a little bit different because it recognizes one of our alumni who passed away before having the chance to lead a full life and career. Robert Kaur worked at General Motors doing research and development on vehicle dynamics and steering analysis. He decided to pursue a PhD at Purdue, and after finishing in 1962, soon joined our faculty teaching automatic uh, controls and employing the use of analog computers. He rose to the rank of full professor in 1967 and continued to teach classes and advise graduate students in their research. In 1969, Professor Kaur spoke at a conference in Cincinnati. His flight back to Indianapolis collided with another plane in a horrible accident. 83 people were killed, including Professor Kaur at the age of 44. All of his students and colleagues spoke highly of him and his work, including Paul Johansson of Naples, Florida, who is here tonight and will accept the award on Professor Kaur's behalf. For, oh, for demonstrating academic excellence in the field of automatic controls and for serving as an advisor and mentor for hundreds of students, the School of Mechanical Engineering at Purdue is proud to present the Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to Robert Kaur. I was Robert Kaur's last doctoral student. It's my honor to accept this award on behalf of my esteemed mentor and dissertation advisor, Dr. Robert Kaur. I'd like to thank Professor Grohl and the Faculty Awards Committee for their nomination and formal recognition of Professor Kaur as a Purdue University Outstanding Mechanical Engineer. You've just heard his Dossier, uh, his history, is very interesting and in some ways very unusual. He was an old student when he was a graduate student, but he was a magnificent professor. He did achieve the rank of full professor in 1967. He was 30, 42 years old. He was a very popular teacher. He, 
he encouraged, he was popular with students from outside the ME school in addition to several other of the engineering schools. His reputation was well known as an outstanding teacher. In his brief tenure at Purdue, he advised many master's students and five PhD candidates. As was mentioned, <clears throat> he died in a midair plane crash on September 9th, 1969, 52 years and one day ago. My wife and I flew into Indianapolis yesterday with mixed feelings. He was 44 years old when he died. <clears throat> Robert Corr was truly an outstanding mechanical engineer. He was also an outstanding teacher, an outstanding research advisor, and an outstanding gentleman. His legacy is a perpetual contribution to the reputation of an outstanding university. In his honor, the RH Corr Graduate Student Fellowship in Mechanical Engineering was established in 2019. Thank you. Our next recipient, uh, Peter Konieczny, began his Purdue journey at Herrick Labs, where he worked on the design of low-noise centrifugal bl blowers. He eventually moved into heavy industry, both here and in his native Germany. He currently serves as Chief Commercial Officer for Amcor, the world's largest food packaging business in Zurich, Switzerland. His company employs 50,000 people worldwide and has revenues of more than $13 billion. In recognition of his successful career in engineering and manufacturing, and for his leading role in providing safe and sustainable food and pharmaceutical packaging around the world, we are proud to offer this Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to Peter Konieczny. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I was wondering what I have done to deserve this award. Maybe this just helped, thank you. Maybe I understand better now. I came in from, from Switzerland yesterday. It's about a eight, nine hour flight, and it gives you enough time to think about what you want to say on an occasion like this. And it really came down to three things. The first one is probably the most important for me tonight, and that is I want to thank my parents. Without them, and without their support in so many forms, I would have never gotten to Purdue, and I certainly would be, wouldn't be standing here today. It's that simple and that fundamental, if you think about it. The second thing that came to mind was my major professor, Stuart. He sits right over there. Maybe I should say Professor Bolton. That would be more appropriate, I think. And that already says so much. Because I arrived here in the late 80s, and pretty much from the start, I was on a first name basis with my major professor. Something that would have been completely unheard of in the country where I came from, which was Germany. Maybe it was also unheard of here at the time, maybe it's still unheard of here, I don't know, you tell me. But it said so much about the relationship that we had. It was open, honest, straightforward, down to earth. And we both shared an ambition to just simply do well. And we did. We did some really nice work. We presented it, it was recognized. Um, we were a good team and we had lots of fun. Thank you for making it fun, Stuart. It's very nice to work with you. The third thing that I wanna say, and this is the last thing, I wanna say thank you, Purdue. I wanna say thank you for creating an environment that allowed me to grow academically, but also personally. I still remember the Welcoming, the welcoming ceremony that we had um, at the time when I started. And it was all just for the international students, and we all got together, and we were all scared. We were all scared. I was still struggling with the language. 
and we had no idea what was coming. And um, we were sitting there and listening to then President Stephen Baring, who challenged us so hard. He challenged us so hard. He challenged us saying we should open up and take it all in. And by all, he meant everything that Purdue had to offer. He talked about the diversity of the people, the nationalities, the cultures, the languages that you would have, um, the diversity of thought and opinions on campus. He challenged us to get to know people, to make as many friends as we possibly could in that short period of time that we would be on campus. A few years later, I listened to him again when we were at the graduation ceremony. And he challenged us again hard by sending us off with the words, dare to dream, but don't fall asleep. <laughs> that impressed the hell out of me then. And I, I, I am still very impressed when I think back to that speech. The bottom, the point of it all is, I spent very little time at Purdue, but it had an amazing impact on what came after. And it had an amazing impact on the person that is standing up here today. And my ask to everybody here at Purdue is, keep doing what you're doing. Because what you're doing is, you're building people. You're forming talent. Keep forming talent. Talent that according to your own high standards, is happy and can be called back here on campus to receive such an award. I'm truly honored. Thank you very much. Our next honoree is a colleague of mine, Chuck Krausgrill. He often jokes that if you add up his time as a student and a professor, it totals 50 years of his life at Purdue. And Purdue is only 150 years old. <laughs> so if you randomly choose any time from Purdue's history, there is a one in three chance that Chuck Krausgrill is involved. In fact, I'd go even further and say, if you randomly asked any Purdue ME student from the past 50 years who their favorite professor was, Chuck's name will likely come up more than any other. He is a master teacher, and if you look in your program, you'll see the list of honors he's received from Purdue. But what is most amazing is that Chuck never stops refining his methods, making them even better for the next generation. Even during COVID, he experimented with a different headset and microphone, so his online teaching was the best it possibly could be. So for his many decades of service, to Purdue, his trailblazing research and teaching methods, and serving as the ultimate mentor to hundreds of Purdue ME students from generation to generation, we are thrilled to give this Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to our friend and colleague, Charles Krausgrill. I fear I'm overprepared. When Christy said five minutes, I, I knew she meant 15, okay? <laughs> but I, I kept it, it, it to five, but I'll try to pare it down to make it more in line with everyone else. As you figured out by now, my name is Chuck uh, Krausgrill, and I got my professional start really as a lawnmower m mechanic while in high school in a farm in southern Indiana. And since that time, as you just heard, for the last 40 years, I have served as a professor of mechanics here in mechanical engineering. I had a wonderful time during those years, five years at Purdue. I worked for Marshall Space Flight Center. Back on campus, we toiled together through the ME program with a friend of mine. Many of you might know Tony, Har Tony, Har Tony Harris. Uh, we worked together in double E labs and, and controls labs. And then five years after that at Caltech and living in Southern California offered a very wide range of educational and cultural experiences, particularly for a lawnmower mechanic from Elizabeth, Indiana. Coming back to Purdue was quite an, an honor, getting to work with faculty members that I knew from the classroom and research. 
I enjoy the research work, but I think the part of the job I enjoy and find the most rewarding has been the, the, the uh, uh, teaching. And in this endeavor, I've taught with the best. I've learned fr from the best in teaching mechanics, design, and controls. And for tonight, I plan to calculate the number of students I have taught in my 40 years. But fortunately, I decided not to depress myself with <laughs> such an age-revealing statistic as that. Okay, eight or 9,000, okay? <laughs> I've worked with a lot of pe uh, uh, people. Uh, we've had some success, I think, in, in instruction. And I think the thing that it really comes down to is that we have viewed the pedagogy through the eyes of our students because what works best for them should probably work best for us. But what I really want to talk about tonight is this opportunity to be in front of a crowd like this to acknowledge the people that I have known during my, my 40 years here. Um, I'll start out with our grad students. Bill is right there at the top of the list. We knew even back then he was going to go far. But I need to point out that an exposition, expedition a few years back with Jeff of traveling through Middle England and, and, and Scotland and, and sampling local be be beverages along the way was quite a trip. <laughs> also on my list are Rick Azadox, Az Az Kim Blair, Angela Bar uh, 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 Barbie, who is back there in the back, a person you all, all know, and one I knew would be very successful when we worked together. And thank you for having the opportunity to work together. Ed Berger, I can't leave him off the list, one of my favorite people in the world, both professionally and, and personally. My mentor in teaching, Bob Fox, I don't know if many people remember him, but he was a giant among his peers. And he was a person whose focus always remained on what was best for the students and what was best for the school. The people with whom I, I worked in research, Farshid Sadegi, learned a lot from him. He's learned something from me, I think. Jeff Rhodes. Comedian Bill Murray once said of David Letterman regarding his impact on his career. He said, I will never have the money I owe him. And at first I thought that was just a one-line joke just for fun about inability to pay debts. But in fact, it wasn't. It was a testament to the impact that his friend had had on his life. To Jeff, I say, I will never have the money I owe, owe you. Anil Bajaj, a career-long mentor, co co uh, 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 colleague, head of school, and friend, and I'll never have the money that I owe him. I'd like to thank Stan Te Tebby and his fa family for the generous uh, support through the Tebby family 150th anniversary uh, professorship that I've been honored to receive. But finally, two people I need to, to mention who are very important in my life. One is my, my dad, a man of strength, at the age of 95, the smartest person I've known in, in my life, an unwavering role model. And Sandy May. Sandy is a person who's had an incredible impact on my life. I'm a better person because she's been kind enough to share her life with me. And thank you to the School of Mechanical Engineering and to my co colleagues for choosing me as an OME. This is a great day. Thank, thank you. Okay. Our next recipient got his BS, MS, and PhD from Purdue so we must be doing something right. 
James McCarthy is the Senior Chief Engineer at the Eaton Corporation, where he has worked for the past 17 years in technologies that reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, from diesel engines. At Purdue's Herrick Labs, he was instrumental in a joint project with Cummins to develop diesel engines that selectively disable um, certain cylinders to improve fuel efficiency and decrease emissions. Those standards soon will be a part of government regulations, and we're proud to be on the cutting edge of defining those innovations. For building partnerships between industry, academia, and government, and promoting, uh, promoting innovative product development in the energy industry, Purdue is proud to grant his Outstanding Engineer Award uh, to James McCarthy. Thank you. I'm honored to be back here at Purdue. Uh, it's been a part of my family the entire time. My dad went to Purdue. He's a former Boilermaker. We used to come to Ross Aid Stadium, but I never got to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> so I started at Purdue in Building 21, about 100 feet from here. That's where I joined Purdue as doing an ME degree. And my Purdue education prepared me very well in both engineering and in business, but it's not easy. I arrived here, they said, look to your left, look to your right. One of them will not be here. True statement. Then there's the junior year in mechanical engineering. Every three weeks, you got a fluid dynamics, you got a heat transfer, you got a statics or, or a dynamics test. And then you take a couple hours to breathe and you do it again. <laughs> but I can tell you that prepared me very well for my career. You, you have to go through that process. It has to be hard. You want it to be hard because then you can progress from that. During, during my uh, time at Purdue, I was deciding between co-op and internship. I took ME 200 with Professor Dwight Sensor, and he offered me a summer internship. So I went out to the Thermal Science and Propulsion Center, which is now Zucro Laboratories, and I started working there with so many great talents. I decided to go ahead and pursue a master's degree in sprays. I got to meet Professor Soika, Professor Heaster, so many great talents that have mentored me, and I'm so thankful for all the professors that I got to work with. Uh, Professor Soika, I'll, I'll call him out, great mentor, and he's done so many great consulting projects for us. Uh, thank you. Professor Heaster, the same way. Upon graduation from Purdue, I was doing paint sprays here, and I went to Detroit Diesel, and I convinced them, hey, I know how to transfer paint to a workpiece, and I can work on fuel injection. I can keep your fuel away from the cylinder liners so it's more fuel efficient. They agreed, so I, I worked there. I worked on reducing emissions for them. It was a, I worked with so many talented people at Detroit Diesel, but the education here at Purdue really prepared me, prepared me for that. I, I worked there for eight and a half years, and then I went to Eaton where I've been uh, since then. I was able to work on emissions after treatment. And during that time, that's when I was able to go ahead and work with, with Professor Soika on projects for fuel dosing technology for after treatment. Julie Tolley's here tonight. She was part of that project. Then I was able to hire Professor Heaster to come up with innovative ways to induce air into after treatment systems to make them more fuel efficient. Then I, then I was back here at Purdue, and I was talking to Paul Soika, and he said, you really need to meet Greg Shaver. So he introduced me to Greg, and we come up, came up with a great partnership. I've been working with Greg for the past 11 years. This all started at a Tigers game. I said, hey, I want to go ahead and work with Cummins and Purdue at the same time. So we invited David Koberlein. We met. We said, hey, we got common interest. Let's work with Greg. A year and a half later, we started it. We did a seven-year program together. This past August, the California Air Resource Board cited more than 10 of our publications together in forming the 2027 diesel emission standard moving forward. That's a great testament to the work that Purdue's doing, the great talent here at Purdue, and the impact it's having on society. 
I'll also say that Greg gave me the opportunity to work with his students. I consider them colleagues and friends. Great staff that he's recruiting. And, and I'm following their careers. And I'm friends with them outside of leaving Purdue. That's the kind of impact that Purdue's having on my life and the life of these students. Outstanding job. I would like to thank my family for their support in my career. First of all, I'd like to thank my father, who's a former Boilermaker. My mom, who's virtually watching tonight with my brother. My daughter, Corinne, she's at Franklin Pierce University playing volleyball in Delaware tonight. And my son's at the University of Kentucky playing baseball. He couldn't make it tonight. Finally, I'd like to thank my wife, Stacy, who received her BS in Aero and their MS in Mechanical Engineering. I thank her for her support. Uh, this is a big deal, guys. Thank you for this honor, this, this, this prestigious award. So our final 2020 recipient wins the unofficial award for traveling the furthest distance to be with us tonight, coming from Istanbul, Turkey. Pinar Menguch is an internationally known scholar in heat transfer, particularly in radiative transport. After finishing his PhD at Purdue in 1985, he served as professor at the University of Kentucky for two decades. He then became the founding head of the mechanical engineering at Erzine University in Turkey. He also established the Center for Energy, Environment, and Economy, which focuses research and development on thermal sciences and human building interaction. For his many academic achievements, his collaboration with industry and academia, and the impact of his teaching on engineering students around the world, Purdue is proud to give this outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to Pinar Menguch. Um, it's an amazing honor. For that reason, I would like to thank Eckert as well as the entire mechanical engineering faculty. But I will tell you a little bit about my excitement about Purdue. When I first came, I came, I flew to Chicago. And from Chicago, I flew to West Lafayette with a propeller plane. This was 1980. Um, it was an unbelievable feeling because, you know, your heart is fluttering. You don't know what's going on. You are starting from a beautiful place, hopefully. And I have no idea about Purdue. You don't have these, you know, photographs going around all the time. So I came here. I came and stayed in the Union Club Hotel for three days. It was a very hot day, August 20th. And uh, the, I went out. The first, I went to the bookstore across the, the Union and got myself Jean-Paul Sartre's uh, imagination book. That book is still with me, and still I couldn't pass the fifth page, because every time I go there and I start imagining things. <laughs> <laughs> so it's never finished. Uh, but that flight was unbelievable when I was coming with the propeller uh, plane. Then the reason I came here indeed was Purdue and Professor Visconta. I wanted to work with Professor Visconta, and interestingly, he gave me this uh, scholarship. And I had no plan B. Today, one of the students was asking, I didn't apply to any other university or any other professor. So it was only Visconti and Purdue. So again, all of these are coming together very nicely. And on top of it, now this time I'm coming, I came to Chicago. This time I rented a car. And I'm driving and I'm thinking if there was a magic, well, if I will feel the same magic that I felt at that time. So about 10 miles outside Lafayette, I started seeing all these wind power <laughs> turbines, hundreds of them. Indeed, the last time when I was here, it was like, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, and I didn't see that this place was this beautiful. 
that gave me this feeling again. So it was the same magic. And then since the beginning I'm watching and Eckert is giving this award which is about a train, I guess, right? And indeed, my, I'm a boiler maker. I'm not sure who else can claim he's a boiler maker. I designed boilers for my PhD thesis. <laughs> So my PhD thesis was radiation transfer in coal combustion boilers. <laughs> so, the, so there was so much magic. And in this time again, when I came and got out and looked around, it was the same feeling. I still feel at home. I don't know what's going on. And several of the awardees, um, apparently they did their BS and uh, master's degrees here too. I'm sorry I didn't do that. My PhD was magical, but apparently it would have been more magical if I started earlier. And I was also surprised when I was doing my PhD that Purdue was paying me. I was getting some research assistantship and I was amazed that they were even paying me to be a <laughs> student here. So I thank to entire Purdue alumni, I need all my friends seeing them together there. And, uh, and one more interesting thing came out. I have to call on William Cummins, if he remembers me, but we wrote a paper together with him back in 80, 1985. <laughs> uh, thank you again. Let's have one more round of applause for all of the 2020 Outstanding Mechanical Engineers. All right, so we're going to take that short break that we promised uh, for everyone to have dessert, and then we'll come back to honor the 2021 recipients. I, I would like to make a quick announcement in the break, uh, very quick. If you wondered why I'm taking the gift away, right, I'm not really taking the, uh, the award away. Just uh, if you want to feel what the weight is, right, uh, it's significant. So uh, every recipient will receive their original train. It will be engraved and it will be shipped to them so that they don't, uh, otherwise they may get like uh, some issues on the airplane. So just uh, uh, for your information, thank you.
All right, are we ready to continue the party? Yes, that table is excited. They win the prize for excitement. Well, um, hi everybody, my name is Jared Pike. I am the communications specialist for the School of Mechanical Engineering, which means I create all the videos, the stories, the websites, social media, uh, this stuff, uh, and in fact, not that. I just, this is hot off the presses today. It's actually hot in my hands. The 2022 Purdue Mechanical Engineering calendar. And this, you don't have to applaud for that. Yes. This does not exist anywhere else but right here in this gathering. So, on your way out, be sure to grab these when you give us our name tags because with that tuition freeze, we have to keep reusing these. <laughs> so, remember, grab a calendar on your way out to show Eckhart that I am earning my money. <laughs> All right, so, uh, part of my job is to interview the alumni of Purdue Mechanical Engineering. I am not an alumnus, I'm not an engineer or an academic. But learning your stories has really enriched my life because every single one of you has a fascinating tale to tell, whether it was here or in your career. And uh, I feel like I've learned so much from you, I could almost pass the FE exam <laughs> if it were multiple choice. <laughs> and I distracted the test person. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Let's get on with it. Let's meet our 2021 honorees. So, our first honorees work is out of this world, literally. Paul Backus went straight from Purdue to NASA in 1987 and has been there ever since. In his role at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, he developed software that controls autonomy, robotic ma manipulation, and sampling algorithms. Now, you may have seen photos of the latest Mars rover Perseverance, that it drilled rock samples and is saving them? Well, he prepared Perseverance to drill those samples, put them in a container, and then stow them away on Mars to be retrieved by a spacecraft that doesn't even exist yet. So, that is what we call forward thinking. That's what we like here at Purdue. So, for creating pioneering software for multiple space missions and for enabling robots to explore autonomously and do things in space we never thought would be possible. The School of Mechanical Engineering is proud to give this Mechanical Engineer Award to Paul Backus. Thank you very much. This is this war is just uh, tremendous, especially being from the prestigious uh, Purdue School of Mechanical Engineering. Um, I'm just honored, really, in my career that I've represented Purdue so well to be able to receive this award. Um, I'd like to thank uh, some people, of course, who've been critical in, in my career. Initially, when I arrived here in 1982, I was welcomed into uh, Professor Leininger's group. Um, where he taught me um, robotics and controls, and also the senior um, other uh, students in the group, uh, especially like uh, Jack Chung, who's watching today. Um, at Purdue, and I, oh, I want, certainly want to uh, say thank you to my family, um, my wife here, Andrea, my daughter, Kimberly, um, our other children who weren't able to make it, um, my uh, wider fa family, all very supportive of me in my whole career, and of course we can't achieve things without the support of our families. Uh, Purdue really um, prepared me well um, to have a really interesting career. Um, of course, academically, um, but it, when I left Purdue, I was able to take some great software tools that I developed, go to JPL, and immediately become one of the leading um, research in telerobotics because of the skills I'd learned and the tools I um, brought with me. But another thing that I really learned at JP at uh, Purdue that was so important was just when I started as a TA, um, it was so ingrained on us from the professors, and I was really struck by it. 
that how much they Im impressed upon us how important every student was. Spend time with them, they're all important, no matter how much they're struggling, all of them. And it really stuck with me my whole life. And now, you know, much of my career I became a manager. But when I'm a good manager, I'm thinking it's, I go back to when I was a TA at Purdue. And I'm treating the people in my group like I was trained to treat the students as, you know, when I was a TA. And so that was really something I learned that was important at Purdue. Um, so uh, there are, uh, so of course, Purdue is well known for producing astronauts um, to support the manned space flight program. But I work at JPL, and of course the manned space flight program is, is obviously very important in NASA. But there's also the unmanned space flight program in NASA, and Purdue supports them just as much, and I'm a representation of that. And so some of the things are very interesting that I've done through my career. And more recently, um, as you just heard, I was very much involved in inventing and designing the concept for drilling the rocks on Mars. And you might follow how the, the drama of it, the first time we drilled the rock, it disappeared <laughs> into a puff of smoke. And, and we really were worrying if that was going to be how all of them went. But fortunately, the next two were fine. And so that was great. But that's the kind of thing that's really exciting to do. And be only because I learned my skills at JPL, I'm able to do that. But also, um, I'm leading a group to develop autonomy for future missions, like to uh, Jupiter's moon uh, Europa. We want to be able to land and have a completely autonomous landed mission where it can do all of the sampling and just downlink the, Earth, the information back to Earth, but not rely on Earth operators. Um, and then the last thing that I'm also working on right now that's really exciting um, is development of the sampling system that might be used in a future mission to Saturn's moon Enceladus. Um, and Enceladus is an amazing uh, moon in that it has a global liquid ocean under about a seven kilometer ice. Um, but what's interesting is it also has continuously up to, uh, erupting ice geysers. So that liquid ocean comes to the surface, falls to the ground, and so what do we need to do? We need to send a, a lander there, land on, the, land on the surface, sample it, and then potentially detect evidence of life in that subsurface ocean. And then when we do, it'll be potentially the most important discovery in the history of NASA, and I get to be part of that uh, because of where I started here at Purdue. So I so much appreciate um, having gone to Purdue, being part of the Purdue family, and uh, receiving this award. So thank you very much. OK, well, as an Apple computer user, personally, I would love to sit and talk with our next honoree for hours. But uh, Robert Belleville was present at ground zero of the personal computing revolution, beginning here at Purdue in the 1970s, where he taught the first ever class here in computer graphics, back when Silicon Valley was just apricot orchards. He and his colleagues at Xerox Park pretty much invented the hardware and software behind the earliest personal computers. In the 1980s, Steve Jobs recruited him to be Apple's director of engineering where they created groundbreaking products like the original Macintosh, Apple Talk, and the Apple Laser Printer, all of which I have used at some point. After Apple, he led engineering teams at Siemens, 3Com, and Silicon Graphics. Now, unfortunately, Robert isn't able to be here in person, but he sent along a video greeting. So, for his pioneering work in the personal computer industry and his continued passion to apply his engineering skills in multiple areas, we are proud to present this outstanding mechanical engineer award to Robert Belleville. In the fall of 1964, I arrived at Purdue to start my year. Within hours, I joined thousands of my fe fellow freshmen at the Edward C. Elliott Hall of Music for our briefing. The first question was, how many graduated at the top of their class? About half raised their hands. I knew this was going to be tough. 
Bill Cunningham was my undergraduate advisor, and he took me through my master's in five years. In his office, he had a quote, to clean a cat, throw him in a mud puddle. So he did. He got me through some tough times, got me my first consulting job, and provided the kind of device that shaped my life. Two years later, after my Army service, Dick Garrett admitted me to a doctoral program with several others to build a lab for computer-aided design. Our crew with Dick and Gladys, Dave Anderson, Mo Gunn, John Palmer, and Phil White, and others did some of the earliest work in using computers to support engineering. Early in 1974, Dick told me I wouldn't be continuing in academia. I didn't understand why, but I hustled to get my degree complete and leaped into the Silicon Valley mud puddle. With Dick's introduction, Doug Engelbart asked me to join his groundbreaking Augmentation Research Center at the Stanford Research Institute in Menlo Park, California. Four decades later, I was contacted by M.E. Scott Banfield. I mentioned the strangeness at the end of my doctorate and Scott investigated. It turned out that Dick Garrett had selfly, selflessly put Dave Anderson and me above his own interests, but was forbidden to tell us what he had to do. I am very pleased to accept this outstanding mechanical engineering award, not so much for myself, but for Cottingham, Garrett, Anderson, and Banfield, and the dozens of other Purdue people that helped me become who I am today. Thank you. Our next honoree is a Nobel Prize winner. Robert Sess applied his mechanical engineering knowledge to studying atmospheric science, which he taught at the State University of New York at Stony Brook for more than 40 years. He developed climate models and experimentally verified the effect of clouds on the shortwave radiation of heat in the atmosphere. When the United Nations assembled its fourth intergovernmental panel on climate change in 2007, Dr. Sess served as a lead author on their final report. And this resonated with the public so much that the team collectively was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. For expanding our understanding of climate change and offering a solid engineering background to confirm the science of studying the atmosphere, Purdue is proud to present this outstanding mechanical engineer award to Robert Sess. Now, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Sess has had some health issues and family issues and couldn't join us tonight in person, but he is watching on the live stream. So let's make sure he hears our appreciation. Thank you, Dr. Sess. Our next honoree, Charles Cross, oversees all turbine engines in the U.S. Air Force. He's been involved with the Air Force Research Laboratory in one form or another since 1989 and has served as a researcher, team lead, program manager, branch chief, consultant, mentor, and technical investigator. He leads a 300-person division with a $110 million budget which he needs because the Air Force has more than 5,000 aircraft in their inventory to maintain. For his expertise in turbine engine dynamics, his coordination and collaboration with all Department of Defense services, and his multiple efforts to sustain and innovate in aerospace, Purdue grants this outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to Charles Cross. That thing is pretty heavy. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes you start to feel a little bit old. And today it was when I was out visiting Zucro and I had a chance to talk with Nicole and Guillermo. And I realized that the first time Dr. Grohl and I actually talked about anything was when he was a young professor and I was doing my PhD. 
and we met up at a party at Pat Lawless's house. <laughs> then I also was told we don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> but uh, seriously, um, you know, first I'd like to thank the faculty for this award. Uh, it's a great honor to be back here, and more importantly, it's been fun walking around campus and, uh, you know, reminiscing. Um, I want to thank my wife, Carrie, for being here tonight. You know, without her support, I wouldn't have had, you know, 20 years to be able to put my degree to good use. Um, none of it would have been possible. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about family aspects here. And, you know, when I came to Purdue, my advisory committee was Joe Hoffman, Sandy Fleeter, Pat Lawless, and uh, Mark Williams from over in the Aero School. Well, with the passing of Joe earlier this year, you know, everyone that was on my committee from the ME department is no longer with us. But in those three guys, I kind of had a pseudo-grandfather, a pseudo-dad, and an older brother to guide, to guide me through research. And, you know, with, with, with Sandy, we shared a love of Cleveland sports. We could talk Indians and Browns forever. With Pat, it was military history. With, uh, with Joe, not with Joe, it could be anything, whatever he was thinking about that day. But to really show, you know, how it was a family, during my dissertation, Sandy and Joe got into a discussion over the room being too hot or too cold. And as I'm sitting there trying to figure out what to do, Pat just motions me over and says, sit down, this is going to take a while. <laughs> you know, so... For about five minutes, we sat there and talked about something else while Mark Williams is looking at his watch, and Sandy and Joe are trying to decide, well, is it something they can fix or should just live with it? <laughs> you know, we moved on. You know, but you know, I, wish, I wish they could be here tonight because they were a big influence. You know, as I look around the room, I see a lot of, you know, other professors that, you know, were involved in lessons I learned at Purdue that I've carried with me. And... Now, you can verify the timestamp on this, so I didn't make it up tonight. But uh, one in particular was fellow re recipient Chuck Krausgrill. And, you know, you talked about him having 9,000 students and, you know, number one on the list as far as, you know, their favorite teacher. Well, I wasn't sure he would even remember me. But I was talking with him before, and I said, you know, you're part of my, part of my uh, comments. And he goes, am I speaking before or after you? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. He goes, well, if I'm after, you know I can make stuff up really well. <laughs> so I had Chuck as my, one of my first classes as a master's student, first semester. And, you know, the first thing I remember about his class was the passion at which he taught. You know, by the end of the class, he looked like he had run a marathon and left everything on the course or in this case, in the course. Um, but there were key things that I really remember that uh, have stuck with me. One, I remember a time when he gave us a homework problem that we had to go solve three different ways. Well, I couldn't do it. I kept coming up with different answers. So after fighting with this for a while, I go see him in his office, and I said, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing wrong. And he looks at it and kind of goes, well, I see what you did here. You know, simple mistake, you know. But what I really don't understand is why you've spent so much time trying to make all the right answers match the wrong answers. <laughs> you know, it had never dawned on me that I had messed up the, uh, the simple method. You know, so a lesson that I've carried with me from, from then on, especially with the young engineers, the students at the base, is you know, don't assume. Don't assume you did the little things right. You know, look closely and then think through it. The other thing I really remember, and he, he denies this tonight, but um, he used to give these marathon exams. You know, he wanted to make sure we had the time to do it right. So we'd go to a room at 6 p.m. And he would say, you got as much time as you want. In fact, you've got all night. <laughs> you know, put the exam under my door when you're finished. And, uh, you know, you sit there for a while, and at some point you reach, it, reach the point where there's nothing left to say. And I remember on one exam, I got to that point, and I decided, I'm not going to waste his time. So I wrote the answer down of, I have no idea how to do this. I'm not going to waste your time with something else. And, you know, I don't know exactly what score I got on that, but I know it gave me partial credit. 
And uh, you know, years later, I tell people, he gave me half credit, but at least that's a story I'm sticking to. <laughs> but again, I don't know if the lesson with that was, you know, take the time to do it right. Maybe you're not as smart as you think you are, or some other one that was mixed in there. But you know, those things have stuck with me. And I, I take great pride in that hard-earned B that semester. <laughs> um, you know, so I look around the room and I see other professors ahead of Mark. Um, you know, so I, thank you, Chuck, for everything you did. You know, they represent really the impactful moments and lessons that the entire faculty in ME has had on thousands and thousands of students. Um, you know, Professor Jones, Fleeter, Lawless, Hoffman, you know, some of the old timers, Sodell, LaCure, you know, Starkey, you know, they were the ones that left a mark back in the early 90s and mid 90s for me. And, you know, the department's in good hands today with Eckert, Nicole, Guillermo, other people. But, you know, you take these lessons and you try to apply them to the things you do. And I think a lot of them are rooted in having somebody else said, you know, first name basis with your, with your professor. You know, getting to really have that, that atmosphere that helps you become the person you want to be and then finding ways to carry that on from that. So again, you know, thank you to the, the, the faculty for this award. You know, thank you for the opportunity to walk down memory lane and see a lot of the things that you know, I was part of starting 25, 30 years ago and what they've become today. Thank you. Nishi Gupta attended Purdue University for her master's degree and worked at Herrick Labs on compressors. But, like many of the people here in this room, she applied her engineering knowledge in a totally different field. She worked at IBM for 32 years in multiple positions in business management. She helped to guide IBM into new markets like digital commerce and Internet of Things. Her team created a business analytics platform that helped to make the operation of servers and software more efficient. In 2017, she became associate director of Change Logic, a business consulting firm. For her dedication and excellence in the business world and for her groundbreaking strategies in digital infrastructure, we are proud to offer the Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to Nishi Gupta. Thank you for the award. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to my family as well. Um, as I was meeting some of the people here this evening, they were asking, saying, what do you remember? What do you remember about being here? And I said, well, what I remember is going from the Emmy building to the Herrick Labs to my dorm. Going to the Emmy building to the Herrick Labs to my dorm. <laughs> and that's all I really remember, you know, in terms of being around on campus. And I remember one day, it was so fidgetly cold. It was so cold. I'm going from my dorm, I think it was on the weekend, and I'm going from the dorm to the lab, and by the time I got to the lab, there were icicles dripping off of my eyelashes. It was so cold, but I didn't care. I didn't care because I had figured out something in my thesis work, and I said, oh my God, I gotta get to the lab. It was on the, I'm pretty sure it was the weekend. Get to the lab, I gotta test this out. And, and I just didn't care. I just ran in there, got in the building, and started working on it, and I, I don't know if it worked. I honestly don't remember all of that. But what, what I remember was the passion, the excitement that I had about doing the work, right? And what I also remember about the lab was it was so much of a family. Everybody there was helping us, the professors, the assistants, um, the guys in the, in the shop. And I remember them helping me figure out something that I couldn't figure out of how to go test something. And so it was a, such a strong feeling of family. And it was very helpful. And I also want to thank my professor then, my primary professor, Professor Bernhard. Um, he was a new professor, and I was his first grad student. And it was, it was a very uh, solid, supporting relationship. Um, he taught me how to think critically, and more importantly, he also taught me how to communicate effectively. When I came here for my grad work, I honestly thought I was a really good writer. 
No. He told me how to really write much better. So it was that whole feeling about the family, and, and I continued to have really, um, continue to communicate with professors, so that relationship continued from the day I left to even today. So I want to thank everybody for the award. It really means a lot to me. Thank you. Do we have any materials scientists that can make that award lighter? Is that something we can work on for next year? I'm making a note. Okay. <laughs> I had the distinct pleasure of interviewing our next honoree uh, last year, just before the lockdown. And boy, does he have some stories to tell. Uh, Alan Kennedy retired from NASA as a senior patent attorney, but that wasn't even on his radar when he came to Purdue in 1963. First, he wanted to be a pilot. But when that didn't work out, he became a design engineer working on dishwashers at GE. And then, because why not, he attended law school and became a patent attorney and eventually found his way to Washington, D.C., working at NASA headquarters, defending NASA's intellectual property all around the world. He has met the president. He has met Walter Cronkite. And he said something to me when I interviewed him last year that stuck with me about Purdue. He said, you don't send a duck to Eagle School. <laughs> and Purdue is Eagle School. <laughs> and uh, believe me, Alan is an eagle. For his pioneering time at Purdue as the first ever black co-op student, for his decades of service to NASA, working behind the scenes with some of the smartest people in the world, Purdue is proud to give this Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to Alan Kennedy. Engineering, thank you, for this most prestigious award. It's an honor that should be reserved for mechanical engineering graduates who truly have performed outstanding deeds in the field of engineering. And some of the routine tasks, assignments that I was designated to perform at NASA headquarters met that criteria. For example, the main lawsuit or engineering project that I coordinated for NASA headquarters in the final 10 years of my career at NASA was a lawsuit pertaining to the NASA Space Shuttle external fuel tank system. You know, that burnt orange, that big burnt orange tank. Uh, the lawsuit was filed by Boeing Aircraft Company against NASA. Boeing issued a uh, You got these iPhones and they just, <laughs> Boeing issued a release about the case in the Seattle Times on April the 9th of 2009, which stated that Boeing uh, may get hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation after winning a patent infringement claim against NASA over an alloy that was used to build the space shuttle. By the way, for this case, Boeing initially sued NASA for $1.24 billion. That's billion with a B. And they were, ordered, they were awarded tens of millions of dollars rather than the hundreds of millions. I was also the NASA uh, patent and trademark attorney who worked with Hollywood movie producer Universal Studios to monitor the factual accuracy of Universal Studios' production of the NASA movie Apollo 13 regarding that NASA moon mission. I got invited to the White House by President Clinton for my participation in that job. And I also reviewed the films of Deep Impact and uh, 
the fictional film, I'll call it, Armageddon. <laughs> but it's very interesting how I ended up working in the field of aerospace and specifically with NASA. In the summer of 1963, I did some career soul searching and decided that I wanted to change majors from a pre-med student in chemistry and transfer to, from Indiana University to Purdue University to pursue a career in the aviation industry uh, as an aviation engineer. That was my secret. I really wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to work in the field of aviation. Unfortunately, during the spring semester of my freshman year at Purdue, I ran out of money. I was going to have to drop out of school and return home. But I anticipated that problem and thought about a long-range solution. I could become a Purdue engineering industrial co-op student and earn enough money to pay for my tuition and living expenses. But there was another problem. The co-op program had never admitted a black student. So at that time in August, in the summer before, Martin Luther King Jr. had just given his, uh, led the March on Washington and gave his I Had a Dream speech. And the Purdue Minority Engineering Program didn't exist back then. So in the spring of 1964, I looked for and found the Purdue Co-op Engineering Office, which was inside the Mechanical Engineering Building. And I went inside and began asking questions to a gentleman inside the office about the co-op program. Finally, he asked me if I was an engineering student and if I was interested in the co-op program. I responded yes, and he asked me what was my grade point average. And I told him, and he said, I want you to be the Jackie Robinson of the Purdue Co-op Program. <laughs> the co-op office then got me enrolled in the Mechanical Engineering School Program and found me a co-op student and engineering assignment at Haynes Stellite Metals Plant in Kokomo, Indiana, which was my hometown. So I didn't have to travel. I could stay at home and save my money. This was back in 1964. And times were different for African Americans back then. There were very few blacks in management or authoritative positions in private industry like I was as a Purdue engineering trainee in Kokomo, Indiana. This is one year before the beating of civil rights leader John Lewis on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And if you were a black employee of Ford Motor Company, you could, you could not live in Dearborn, Michigan Ford's headquarters. But from that day forward, the Mechanical Engineering School took me in under their wings and they groomed me. They taught me, they trained me, they nurtured me, and they gave me tough love and they kicked my butt. <laughs> and somehow I survived the process. 30 years later, after many more of life's twists and turns, I went on to become a senior patent attorney at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. In that capacity, for all practical purposes, I was a NASA headquarters patent attorney, project attorney, or engineer, and held the title of director of the patent infringement division. I was responsible for working with the U.S. Department of Justice to assist them, DOJ, in the legal discovery process in resolving patent infringement lawsuits against NASA, sometimes billion dollar lawsuits. In addition, I was responsible for such activities as monitoring trademark matters regarding the authorized public use of the NASA name and insignia. I am so proud to be receiving this award, but it would never have happened if it wasn't for the Purdue Emmy School and all you people did to educate me, to groom me, you took me through the ME school rite of passage ritual. Thank you. I can never repay you folks for educating, training, and molding this country boy from Kokomo, Indiana. Thank you.
So wait, Armageddon was not a real movie? That's, that's news to me. Thank you, Alan. Uh, our next honoree is an accomplished businessman, strategist in the energy sector. James Overman graduated from Purdue in 1980 and went straight to Shell Oil as a plant support engineer. Eventually, he got his MBA and transitioned into the business side, working in strategy, development, and implementation. He also has consulted in hydrocarbon supply and trading, commercial marketing, and technical IT systems. Now retired, his last position was a joint venture between Shell and Pemex, the Mexican oil company. For his extensive experience in the energy industry and for his dedication to succeed in almost any role in the business, Purdue is happy to grant this Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to James Overman. First thing that comes to mind is just wow. Uh, I'm, I'm humbled after listening to uh, the experiences and, and the contributions of all the honorees. I feel like I should give the award back, Eckerd. Uh, but no, really, I, 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 am, I am quite, I'm honored, I'm humbled. Uh, I want to thank Eckerd and the, the mechanical engineering team uh, for this recognition. There's so many themes that have been repeated uh, in our MEA, ME, or the, the advisory council meeting today, uh, here in terms of what other people have shared. Uh, clearly, Purdue uh, provided all of us, and me included, kind of that academic rigor uh, that, that clearly opened doors uh, for all of us. But when I think about Purdue, in addition to the academic rigor, uh, I, I think about my passion for Purdue. Uh, my dad worked for, I don't know, 40 years or so for Indiana Bell, and he used to recruit at Purdue and Notre Dame and Rose, uh, at the time, Rose Polytechnic, now Rose Holman. But he always used to talk about the quality of the Purdue engineer uh, that came in to Indiana Bell. So I, I, I grew up kind of knowing and loving Purdue, and, and it was an easy choice for me when when I had to make that decision. Uh, when I got here, I met my wife uh, freshman year, uh, an, an East Coast girl, and, and she's been my partner and supporter you know, for the last nearly 45 years, four years here at Purdue and 41 years of, of, of marriage. But I also think about my experience at, at Purdue and what it taught me beyond kind of the technical aspects in terms of what I think has, has contributed to uh, my little success. And that's things like teamwork, uh, collaboration. Uh, I've heard heat and mass transfer mentioned a few times. Heat and mass transfer definitely taught me uh, resilience and, uh, and a bit of persistence. You know, I think that was my, the first class when my, my mid-semester report was uh, Let's just say it wasn't a passing grade. So, uh, um, but, but it's also embedded in me kind of that lifelong, uh, you know, critical thinking and, and always in problem solving mode too. And many times that benefits me and sometimes with Diane and I talking, sometimes I just need to step back from problem solving and, and, and listen a bit more. But I think, but, but again, I think that the, the point is the academic rigor is there, uh, that, that's why we come here, but, but Purdue uh, contributes to all of us in so many more, more ways than, than that. And uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm proud to be, I call it a true Boilermaker. I mean, only mechanical engineers can say they're true Boilermakers in my mind. And uh, I love Purdue, proud to be a Boilermaker and honored by the recognition. So thank you very much. Dedication, that's a word that wholeheartedly applies to our next honoree, Jim Rao, who spent 50 years working for the automotive equipment manufacturer, TRW. He started in 1969 at the Ross Gear Division, where he worked on the steering systems for construction and agricultural vehicles. He progressed through multiple roles in the company, 
and oversaw their recent merger with the German company ZF. This global perspective is something Jim wanted to share with the next generation, which is why he is a passionate supporter of not just the cooperative education ed program here at Purdue, but also the GEAR program, which combines work experience and overseas learning experience. For his dedication to engineering excellence at TRW and for his vital support to generations of Purdue ME students transitioning into the workforce, we are proud to present this Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to Jim Rao. You know, it's outstanding to be here with all these outstanding people. Um, first, uh, it's kind of a DNA I think you've seen here tonight. As I walked around at the reception, I, I met many people and many common threads. The first, uh, my wife Linda's here. Uh, when you support a, a family where you've got an automotive engineer that travels around the world and basically one time I'll give you an example. I was in the UK, flew back to the States, Detroit Airport. My boss calls, Where are you? Oh, I just came back from a visit and operations. Go back. You got to go back to Opal. They're doing a joint venture with Fiat in Italy, and we need you there immediately. So I got back on the airplane, and away I went. That's automotive. You can imagine being a spouse, a uh, person like that. My grandson's here. He's going to be the third generation Boilermaker we've been talking about tonight at uh, Dawson Circle. I'm really proud to have him here with us. And my daughter is Kim and Heather. Um, you know, the ME school I've been involved with for a long time, over 50 years here, <clears throat> when I think about it. And I, I want you to kind of think about the strength of this school and the strength of the alumni that it produces. It's just unbelievable to me. And I'm going to share a couple of stories of why I think it's unbelievable. Uh, and when you leave, there's a lobby here. There's a football stadium sitting out there. I'm going to talk a little bit about that football stadium because it was built by our company's founder, David Ross. And you're going to see a tribute to David Ross in the pavilion lobby. And on the other side, you're going to see George A., which is a playwright. So here's an engineer and a playwright working together with a vision to build a football stadium. And you know why he built the football stadium? Because he was funding the Memorial Union, okay, for people coming back from the First World War. And everywhere he went to get the money for the Memorial Union that they're renovating now, right? By the way, I'm getting close to talking about your renovation. Okay. Um, I said, well, gee, the football's not doing too well, Purdue. Well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> And every time you try to get money for the union, they said, well, you build a football stadium and we'll build a union. And so a lot of things around here, basically, uh, I have to give credit to um, uh, David Ross and George Aid. So um, a few words. Like all these other stories you've heard tonight, I came here uh, basically from Indianapolis. Uh, I was a uh, associate two-year tech degree guy. And I said, gee, uh, uh, I went to work at International Harvester. And, I, and they said, well, if you go to Purdue, you can become a co-op, and you can work here, and you can continue your, your degree. So that's what I did. But that was shell shock. When I came up here to go to Purdue and transfer from that school at the Indy campus, it was called Purdue Extension at the time, and to go into the junior year and try to compete, it was tough. But I survived. Here I am. But anyway, uh, uh, one of the things right away when I went to work at Ross uh, after leaving International Harvester, um, there was a lot of global engineers that came here, and I met their families. I met their children, and I had this idea of, of trading the families between Purdue people 
and are, these folks are around the world. So I sponsor people from Brazil, sponsor people from Germany, where my children would go there and they, their children would come here. And that kind of led to this whole idea of co-op, and it still lives in my family today. So let's go a little bit to um, Ross Gear and Ross Gear, when it became part of TRW, it formed TRW Automotive Worldwide because they were global already to begin with. I don't know if I get the five minutes here, but I think this is kind of important. But it also had an aerospace arm. It's very unusual to have a company that does both. The Department of Defense Aerospace injecting technology, like a technology transfer, into automotive. And if you think about the products that we made, and I got to do this because my boss would fire me if I didn't go to a talk with an engineering community that I didn't put a part on the table. <laughs> so here's the part of the table, which is an electronic control arm. Basically for a five horsepower motor. And if you leave tonight, you're probably driving this product and you don't know it. Okay? And it's called an electric spare, uh, power steering uh, controller. And, and if I think about it, it has a lot of our suppliers and we had a lot of customers. We built that first ever, had to build our own motor plants, our own microprocessor plants, and the people, quite frankly, uh, uh, some of our suppliers failed us. I remember one day I came to work, and Emerson Electric, I'm sure you've heard of this company, handed me the keys to the motor winding plant. Take it. It's too hard, but Purdue engineers never fail. I sent my people in there, we renovated that plant, put it on its feet, trained the workforce and got it into production. And we make millions and millions of these devices today. I want to talk about my, my major professor was Fred Mars. We have a little award, right, that Eckert helped me put together uh, um, basically for outstanding uh, junior. In fact, I think Marcus is here, the winner, or he was here. There he is. He's one of the uh, folks we deal with. And just this, um, um, uh, summer, a couple of my co ops just graduated. One end, ended up basically at Toyota. Another one ended up basically at a, a surgical company up in Chicago. And I really like the idea of hands on directly to the students, particularly at the undergraduate level. It doesn't happen a whole lot. So I really appreciate that. But anyway, for, uh, I, I call it the glint in my eye. I remember being in a meeting with our CEO. His name is. Uh, uh, basically Joe Garman, and we were in the middle of a program, kind of like uh, we were talking about before, and I had spent a hundred million dollars of the company's money on, on this product. And Joe says, when are you going to sell it? When are we going to get the business? And I said, Joe, I'm going to get Nissan. How are you going to get Nissan? You're going to build this in the U.S. and export it? I said, yes, I'm just going to be good enough. We're going to export that product to Nissan. We exported it to Nissan. We got it to Micra uh, business. And I don't know if you've ever seen the little, most people know the little cube that Nissan puts out. You ever see that little cube, that funny look? It has that product on it. So anyway, I want to close with one of the products uh, that basically uh, you may not be aware of that TRW put out. And it was from my mentor at TRW. TRW had a mentoring program. And I was mentored by a fellow, basically it was a UCLA uh, engineer. And he did the Apollo descent rocket engine. His name was Pete Stodhammer. That flew, I think, something like 12 astronauts to land on the moon, including Neil Armstrong. First time he ever flew that thing was when he landed it in the gravity situation. And, and Pete was, was the guy. So I want to close, I guess, uh, with those comments. And maybe you put out a plea that's probably not allowed, but I'm going to do it anyway. I saw TRW be acquired by ZF. By the way, I was not on the acquisition team. I was, the, uh, I was acquired, OK? And I got to thinking about this tonight. I thought we were built to last. We were going to be around. If you don't keep your eye on the ball, you can get acquired. I'm not saying it's bad. It happens. And Purdue has an extremely strong legacy here. And I think we need to reinforce this mechanical engineering department, rebuild, renovate, whatever needs to be done there, 
and I can't think of a better group that I can solicit tonight, okay, to put some money into this engineering center. And I'm going to tell you one final comment about this. When the Board of Trustees built the football stadium, $67 million was put on the table in less than a year. And it's all Ross Aid Foundation money. The same guy you're going to see on that portrait. They issued what they call certificates of participation. That's like, bond, that's like issuing a bond. And I think if we can spend $67 million on a, a football complex, by the way, I'm, I, I've got endowments in athletics as well. I have scholarships there as well. We need to support the ME department and the College of Engineering at least $67 million. So think about it tonight. Thank you for the award. And I apologize if I did a little commercial at the end, but you deserve it. Now, no pressure to our remaining recipients, uh, but he had show and tell. I'm just saying. Well, here at Purdue, our students conduct research that would be impossible to conduct elsewhere, and one of those areas is energetic materials, propellants, explosives, and pyrotechnics. A perfect example of this is our next honoree, Norman Thomas. He has spent his entire 38-year career in ammunition manufacturing, maintenance, logistics, engineering, and management. Working out of NSA Crane in Indiana, Norman rose through the ranks as a project engineer, then a division chief in charge of quality control, and then management of industrial operations, and then director of engineering. And today, he is deputy to the commander. For his tireless work in modernizing munitions for all military branches, and his oversight of one of the most dangerous manufacturing processes there is. Purdue is proud to give this outstanding mechanical engineer award to Norman Thomas. So I thought uh, whenever I graduated from Purdue, I had been through the toughest part of my life. Um, but then I, I got a job with the Army in the middle of a Navy base in the middle of southern Indiana. <laughs> and the problem was it was only 30 miles from Indiana University. So, so I knew what working close to enemy lines was really like. <laughs> but um, so. I wasn't able to bring any show and tell uh, because, you know, they don't allow us to carry around the energetics and things. So uh, you could probably be thankful for that. But uh, my, uh, my career of 38 plus years working with ammunition, energetics, and explosives led me to uh, coming back to Purdue a, a couple years ago working with Jeff Rhodes in the Purdue Energetic Research Center. And uh, we are working on new technologies, uh, bringing back some of production from uh, other countries back to the U.S. to help secure uh, our warfighters' ammunition capabilities. Uh, also working with Purdue to develop an uh, engineering curriculum for energetics <clears throat> to help uh, with creating the next generation of enger energetic engineers. So. With that, uh, first I'd like to thank all the people that felt I was deserving of such a prestigious award. I would like to accept this award on behalf of all those who have been my guides and uh, folks that have helped me along this journey. Uh, for without their help, I wouldn't be able to stand here today. <clears throat> I would like to thank uh, God for giving me the skills and ability my teachers and professors uh, who shared their knowledge and, and challenged me. Uh, Purdue University for my 
engineering foundation that's, that's lasted me for uh, all my life. My parents for raising me with the values to be a good leader. The many teammates, co-workers, supervisors, managers, colonels, generals that have supported me through my career. <clears throat> my kids who have persevered long days, missed events and, and weeks without my presence. <clears throat> but mostly my wife, who has been the glue that helps, <clears throat> holds us together, the rock that keeps us anchored, and our biggest cheerleader or critic, depending on what was required at the moment. She's helped me through all my challenges with her love and support to make me the person I am today. Thank you all. Our final honoree tonight is Brad Tolley. Brad got his start as an engineer at Ford Motor Company and soon moved on to the automotive supplier Visteon Corporation, where he transitioned into the business side, eventually becoming their global strategy director. He is now president of Shiloh Industries, which works with automotive manufacturers to make their products lightweight and reduce noise and vibration. He transformed the company from a Michigan-based, U.S.-focused automotive supplier to a truly global billion-dollar business. For his decades of experience in the automotive industry and his proven success in growing a global business, we are proud to give this Outstanding Mechanical Engineer Award to Brad Tolley. Somebody should come out of this background here at some point during the evening. <laughs> so I'm between you and the parking lot. I have this great honor. Uh, I figured I'd cut down my 45-minute speech down to about 30, but I asked for theme music too, so I don't know what happened there. Uh, I'm really honored and want to echo a lot of what we've heard tonight, that this is fantastic. I can't really imagine uh, this uh, award. Um, and certainly my colleagues and uh, those of you in the audience today, it's, it's really um, humbling and, and impressive. Um, to talk about what Purdue's meant to me and what mechanical engineering's meant to me is really hard to do. My great-grandfather graduated in 16 from ME. My dad and uh, role model graduated in 62 and 63 from ME. So certainly had a long history of uh, of this university. I've literally been here my entire life, so 53 years, probably right out there mostly, but um, spent my whole life uh, here. So um, funny story, my coming out of the gate, right out of high school, I came here and uh, engineering didn't start out the way that I thought it would. <laughs> I was really good at a lot of things, except I had no desire to go to school. So <laughs> went home for a couple of years, got my head straight, worked for a while, got that anxiety that the world was passing me by where I really felt like I was now focused and went back to school. I come in, they assigned me to Professor Fox as an advisor, and he said, well, we're gonna pick some classes. Do you think you're ready? And I said, well, I, yeah, I'm ready. I'm, you know, getting old. I'm totally ready. So he's like, all right, all right. So comes out, grabs six of the hardest courses in ME and says, this is kind of the meat and potatoes program. You pass this, I think you're ready. I, I think I slept three hours that entire semester. So, no, it was fun. And uh, I want to thank my wife and my, my dear friend, Chris, who uh, is also a colleague and uh, a graduate of mine in 94 as well. So um, thank you again. And uh, it's been a fantastic evening. So have a good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your inspiring stories are truly what keep us all going. The staff, faculty, and the students. You set the example of what Purdue MEs are able to achieve, and you make us all want to push even further to achieve even more. Now, before our program concludes, two things. First of all, you might remember this fabulous 
2022, exclusive, mind you, exclusive to this gathering right here, right now. You don't want to leave without getting one. So on your way out, grab a calendar. And secondly, the recipients, all of them, 2020 and 2021, if you could come to the stage, we're going to take a group photo uh, because there's uh, 15 of you here. We want to get all of them in one picture. So please come to the stage first. And then with that, our program is concluded. Safe travels home, continued success. Boiler up and hail Purdue. Good night.